Ah, the last dog bite of the school year. And I know it's sad, seniors. This is the last dog bite you'll see as a Widener Bear High School student. In this episode, uh, we've just got a few last things to cover with you all. Look out for a spot um, from us in counseling about an update on club sponsorship for next year. Mr. Maxwell will be joining us to give us some new breaking information um, for students um, who have failed classes or might fail classes for this um, semester. Mr. Costello gives us a rundown on his last two questions um, for Ask Mr. C for this school year. I'll share some upcoming info on a few surveys we want to start target for juniors, transfer students, and a last plug for the class of 2021 to complete their senior surveys. Um, but now, let's hear from Ms. Jackson on some information from Work-Based Learning. Hello, Wanderer High School students. It's me, Ms. Jackson, Work-Based Learning, and I'm here with one final announcement for the school year, part-time and full-time jobs. I've taken the time to hang these neat signs up with a QR all over the school for students to sign. Whether you need a part-time or full-time job, they are posted here. We have part-time openings for all students at places like the YMCA, Ruby Tuesdays, Chick-fil-A, Aikens Ford, and Camp Twin Lakes. And you seniors that are graduating and want a full-time job, places like Bluebell Ice Creamery, ER Snail, City of Jefferson, Carvana, and Caterpillar, they want you. So go ahead, take the time while you're in the halls, scan this neat little QR. If you don't know where they are, stop by my office. There's one on the wall. There's one near all the vending machines and other places where you hang out in the school. Good luck. And if you need a reference or help with the resume, stop by the Work-Based Learning Office. Thanks and have a great summer. Hey everybody, my name is Angela Bruce. I'm one of the counselors at Winder Barrow High School. Um, we're excited to announce that next year, the, our department, the counseling department, is going to be advising the GEA. Awesome. But what is GEA exactly? It is the Gender and Equality Alliance, where people in the LGBTQ plus spectrum, allies, questioning, everybody's invited. If you have any questions at all, feel free to stop by the counseling office and meet with one of, our, one of the counselors. And we're excited to have a good school year. Yay! Thanks. Hey there, Neo Double G Dogs. This is Principal Maxwell here. Got a quick little announcement for you guys. Uh, it is not the most exciting topic that we will discuss, but it is something that is very important and we feel like it's a tremendous opportunity for you um, as part of our district's plan to help cover some of the learning that did not take place during the pandemic. We are offering a one-time summer school program with some CARES Act money, and we hope to provide students with the opportunity to, re to remediate or to recover credit for students who earned a grade between a 60 and a 69. Uh, priority will be given to seniors, and then we will check down the list and invite as many folks as possible. We want you to finish strong and get to 70 to not have to summer school, but if you end up in that situation needing a course to graduate or just wanting to recover a credit and you earned an initial grade higher or up a 60 or higher in that course, then you are eligible for unit recovery in our summer program. The program will run from, run from June 1st through June 24th. It will be from 9 to 1 and it will be here at Wonderbar High School when we provide it to lunch. Um, Senior, as soon as senior grades are due, we're going to run their report and first priority, like I said earlier, we'll be giving seniors to in that course to graduate and then we will come down our list and begin in, inviting students. Uh, please take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, it prevents you from being reseated in that course or having to pay $150 to take that course in Foothills in order to graduate. Um, so that way you can, if you've gotten off track for any reason during the pandemic or for any other reason, Take advantage of this great opportunity to get back on track so you can graduate all the time with your class. Thank you and have a great day. All right, so as promised, a little bit of survey time. We want, again, class of 2021, there's about 61% of you that have actually completed your senior survey. We want to hear from all 440 of you. So go ahead, um, do whatever you need to do to find the link, get this done so we can get that information to Mr. Maxwell and Dr. McMichael. Um, that they request. Secondly, 
Next year, uh, with the help of one of our uh, interns, Miss Dean, uh, we'll again run a first generation college bound group. We would like to expand this group to more members. So if you are the first person in your immediate family to attend college, if you have questions, you're worried about it, you've got concerns, um, you know, to make that jump from high school to college or technical school, um, or if you just want more information with like-minded others like yourself, um, this group's for you. So check out uh, this survey so you can, uh, you know, give us your feedback, give us your name, and we can kind of screen you for that group. Um, and then lastly, something that's kind of been on the mind of, uh, of us as counselors for a while now, um, we would like to try out a new group next year for transfer students to Winerboro High School. Um, you all have value and bring a diverse experience um, from other schools that enrich our school. If you're right now current ninth through 12th grade um, student and you have ever transferred um, while, you're, while you've been in high school, coming to Winderboro High School, please consider uh, taking this survey and helping us build this opportunity. Happy end of the school year, kids. This is our final Ask Mr. C. Um, first question I want to get to is one of our recent ones. Uh, where's the line between soup and cereal? <sighs> I never really thought about that, guys. Um, I would say, I'm like, oh, of course, soup is warm, all right? But then, you know, you got your stop, your gestapo, whatever it's called, you know what I'm saying? That's a cold soup. So, I don't know. I got to get back to you on that one. It's probably one of those ones I got to do a poll for. But uh, drum roll for the last serious question I'm going to answer, the one I've been working on all year in a little bit, uh, in some sense, comes from a Miss Miranda Geegan asked me, what's the oldest house in Winder? Oldest house still standing in Winder. So, before I go ahead and tackle this, I gotta tell you how my brain works on this. One, we're talking about a house that's something that someone lives in or people live in. I prefer not to use like a business now, okay? And I don't want to talk about like a shack someone had built in someone's backyard that no one's ever lived in before. So I'm looking for like a domicile with bedrooms and bathrooms, that kind of thing. And uh, I started with the Barrow uh, Preservation Society. Uh, I know some of those people, I've done some tours with them before, some stuff at the uh, Rose Hill Cemetery, so I sent them an email and I got some responses back and then uh, I'll, I'll go from there. So here we're looking at Winder, here's uh, Winder Bear High School, you can see Rose Hill Cemetery, West Athens Street, North Broad Street, you know, which is 2 Highway 211, and over here on uh, West Candler Street. The, in the 1970s, that's when people in Barrow County decided they wanted to get us on the historic registry, okay? Uh, that's where you apply and you say, hey, this is an area of historic significance. And the area that we're talking about is all right around in here, okay? This is really, if you want to think about a place from there, from where the split is over, where it goes off into uh, the stadium, where 82 is, back down in here. From the, the big thing we Bojangles, Winder First Methodist Church, all down here. This is the historic district. There's signs out there saying it. And a lot of homes were built like in the 1900s here. Now, to tackle this, I got a list of some houses here and records get a little bit spotty, if you can imagine. You're talking about a time when literally before Barrow County existed. Uh, when, uh, uh, Barrow County is from like 1916 on. The rumor was that since this used to be where Walton, Jackson, and Gwinnett hit, the, the rumor is that a person living in Jackson County shot a man in Gwinnett County, but then ran over that person and died in Walton County. And to avoid a murder trial in three different counties, uh, they made Barrow County. I don't know if that's true or not, but what was definitely true was well, there were many people who lived in one of those three counties, worked in a different county, and attended school in another. So in order to kind of get rid of all that, and really, literally, the middle of downtown Winders where they three met, they decided to go ahead and make a brand new county. And now we got Barrow County. You know, it's, it's one of the newer counties in Georgia. Now, if you also know about this, I'm going to increase your guys' Google food here, okay? Uh, there is the Barrow County Tax Assessors. Taxes make the world go round, as we all know. And from here, you've got Pew Public Net, where you can actually start typing in addresses and see where homes or when homes were built and who owns them, that, that kind of thing. So the issue is, most of the homes I can find around here were built in either late 1800s, we'll go visit one of those in a minute, okay, or the early 1900s. Then poking around, I find an outlier. I actually find a house over here 
by uh, the Dollar General off of West Athens Street that's coming up as being built in 1862, which would put it as the oldest house around here by about 40 years. The issue is all the houses built right around it all say like the 19, early 1900s. So that's like a very strange phenomenon for me to have an 1862 house just appear out of kind of nowhere. But um, so the answer is I'm not really 100% sure. Uh, according to the tax records, 1862 is gonna be the oldest house. And the other one I can come up to would be the 1881, which is 41 West Candler Street, which is the Magnolia House, which is a restaurant now. So is that really a house, Miranda? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but we're gonna go drive by both of those to kind of show you guys where this historic district is and come along for a ride. Welcome to the corner of West Midland and Center Street. This is where the historic district starts for Barrow County. Now, I'll pan around to some of these houses here. Most of these houses around here are gonna be built in the early 1900s, okay? Now, yet again, this is about 10 years before Barrow County even exists. So I'm amazed that our tax records remotely go back that far, okay? We're gonna go look at a couple houses in here that are in contention, and then we're gonna go look at the grand old one of 1862. Okay. This home here is built in the late 1800s. I happen to know this because a very famous soccer coach by the name of Coach Karras lives catty corner to it. His home was built in 1917, so he's got one of the older homes in Winder, but not super old. But that one there is the late 1800s home. Still, we can go a little bit older than that, so let's go. And the Magnolia House. Now, the Magnolia House, who is the one we have some concrete data on, okay? Um, this was the property of Dr. Wiley H. Bush, okay? He bought the property in 1880, and he started this house being built somewhere around 1881 or 1882-83 era. But regardless, this house was complete. People living in it, 1883 guaranteed. That puts us one of the oldest verified homes in all of Winder, Georgia. Woo! But... It's not a house now, it's a restaurant. I actually love the food there. It feels real good when it goes in. Southern food, mm -mm, great banana pudding, but no one lives there now because it's a restaurant. A great restaurant at that. Slight hiccup, kids. We just drove by the house that according to the tax documents was built in 1862. And I'll just be honest with you. They got something pretty offensive in the window and Peppers and I, we don't know how to edit out just one little thing. So I went to the house next door. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird, okay? This house, according to the tax records, was built in 1902, but the one right next door past those trees, it says 1862. In my gut, 1862 feels like it's too old. Yet again, though, we're talking about 50 years before Barrow County even exists. The records are all splotchy and bad. I don't know if the house was built then, and then things were added onto it, but definitely these two homes are considered some of the oldest in Winder. So for our purposes of our video, we'll pretend this is the one right over there with something pretty offensive in the window. So just use your imagination, I guess. But maybe 1862? I'm not really sure. But I will say this. Miranda Geekin, thank you so very much for this. I love questions like this that make me think about it all year long, how I'm going to tackle it. And if anyone out there knows of a home older than 1862 or can verify something before 1881, the Barrow Historic Preservation Society is actually interested in that information. So hope you guys have a safe and happy summer and love y'all. I'll see you next year. Overall, thanks for watching this year. It seems fitting uh, with a year that's been filled with digital learning, A and B days, quarantines, Google Meets, virtual days. Um, you know, to end it with a video from home. Uh, make sure that, you know, within these last few days, you wrap up anything that you need to finish strong with finals. Um, and then also over the summer, take time to learn more about yourself. Seek out the positive um, and let the positive find you. And we'll see you back here soon.
addendum. So yesterday, what is cereal and what is soup question? I've had time to think about it, so I'm just filming this in the morning, all right? Uh, soup is always like a water-based decay. It's usually warm and it can have meat. It doesn't have to, but it is water-based, while cereal is always grain-based, uh, and the base is, uh, um, can have milk in it, okay? So there, there's, your, there's your big difference, okay? And you can have a warm cereal, like an oatmeal, okay? And you can have a cold soup that's uh, like a gazpacho, gazpacho, yeah. But, uh, but I think it's the meat and water versus milk and grain always. And